Hi everyone, welcome to a Sip and Spin Spindle Spotlight. Today's spindle is more of a tool as opposed to a spindle. And I'm really glad that I've had so many people comment and suggest that they wanted to see this particular style of spindle slash tool being demonstrated. So today's spindle spotlight is a Mayan spindle. And I wanna step back for just a second and I wanna talk a little bit about The World of Spindles, which is an ebook by Beatrix Nutz. It is a compendium of distaff spindles and what's brilliant about it is that it is organized by region. And so as I was reading through that book, I realized there's this beautiful evolution of how tool styles travel from region to region. And it, it, it's a great read in the sense that there are a lot of beautiful distaff stylings, but there are also a lot of very similar spindles that are used by a lot of different cultures across the world or around the world throughout history. And the Mayan spinner, or as it's also known, the rake straw, the whirly gig, the twisting paddle, which is my favorite. These are just a few of the names that this particular is known by. And it's, I'm gonna say this again and again and again and again. It is definitely more of a tool than an actual spindle. For one thing, it's designed to be used by two people. So in all of the images that I've seen of this particular tool, one person, spins the tool while a second person draws out the fiber and then adds fiber to it as the rope gets longer and longer and longer and longer. One person using this tool is unique and it presents a little bit more of a challenge. Similar tools like this have been found in ancient Egypt, Russia, Spain, across the United States from the northern U.S. all the way down to the southern parts of the United States as well as into Central and South America. And I think the most recent findings, uh, or the most recent uh, examples or versions of this tools were found in Central and South America and that's how the Mayan spinner name sort of has stuck with this particular tool. And that's what it's most commonly known as. So for today's spotlight, I'm gonna do something just a little bit different. For one, I have two Mayan spindles. One is hand carved by Alan Berry, and I love it. Um, this is the one that went to Mexico with me. So if you follow me over on Instagram, I did do a couple shots with me using this particular spindle. This one is by Muddy Duck. It's a little bit more easily obtainable. And of course, I'll put those links down in the description. And the fiber that I'm going to be using, instead of using the traditional um, top that I have been doing, I am going to go ahead and showcase one of my favorite fibers. This is Valet Black Nose, and I absolutely love Valet Black Nose. They are the most adorable sheep that I have ever seen, and this sheep, or this breed, is primarily used for meat production, but honestly, I think that if we can find a better reason to use their fiber, maybe they'll be used more for fiber production than meat production as a plant-based person. That's just where I'm gonna put my little two cents because the fiber is renewable. So here is raw valet black nose. Look at these beautiful, long, lustrous locks. And here are a couple versions of it washed just this gorgeous, white, bouncy, fluffy light. And then this is what it looks like worked into a bat. Now, the only downside with this fiber is that it's a little bit coarser. This is definitely not next to skin soft. Like in my mind, I think that this would make a really great piece of outerwear or it would work well as a rug. Now, a bat like this and a tool like this 
it's not going to work really well together. So the other tool that I want to talk a little bit about today is the Diz. The Diz is nothing more than a thing with a hole in it. And, and, and that's all a Diz is. It can be anything. It can be a button. It can be a piece of cardboard. It can be a piece of wood with a, drill, a hole drilled in the center and you can make the hole whatever diameter that you want. A Diz is function. The function of a Diz is nothing more than taking a large bit of fiber and working it into something that's a little bit more manageable like roving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly pull this bat through this Diz. And this is a, a fairly substantial hole because it doesn't need to be very fine for what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to pull this through. And the nice thing with using a Diz, I, for me, working with a bat has always been just a little bit cumbersome in the sense that it's hard to navigate, whether I'm working on a spindle or working on a wheel. I like using a Diz to sort of even out the fibers. It, it doesn't really align the fibers so much as it just makes the whole bat more manageable in terms of working with, you get this nice bit of roving here. And for this, uh, the Valet Black Nose that I processed here, there are a little, there are some neps in here, which would be, if I were working with this on a wheel, it would be very frustrating, but pulling it through the Diz, I can see where those neps are. Now, if I were being proactive, I could pull those out now. I'm not because of the tool that I'm going to be showcasing here. Now that we have this fluffy bat that is taken out, so now it looks more like a bit of roving, it's a long snake, now we can get started and it's going to just be a little bit easier. Getting started on this particular type of spinner or tool is a little bit of a challenge. One of the things that I really love about the Muddy Duck is the fact that there is this concave piece right here. And so in order to get started on this concave piece, I'm gonna do something a little bit different than what I've ever done with a tool before. I'm going to sort of secure a little bit down in there and then I'm going to pull some out like so and I'm going to wrap it around. And I've discovered that this just makes it a little bit easier to get started. And I'm going to spin in the direction away from me. And I only do that because I find that for this particular type of tool, it's a little bit easier to draw out as I am doing that. So once again, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna wrap around a couple times use my finger to get started, and then I'm going to start spinning. Draft out a little bit. The nice thing with this particular type of tool, oh, sorry, I have to be careful. I did, yes, now it's decided that it wants to it wants this part to be the spindle and that is not what I want. So we're gonna do that, no problem. Now that I've got some of the twist in there, I will do that. And like I said,
Develop a little bit of a leader, like so. And once I have that leader, which worked perfectly, I'm going to go ahead and wind on to the paddle. And the paddle is where I'm going to store all of my fiber. And so once I get going, I do like this little bit because it enables me to wrap it around and it just, it, it helps me to draft out a little bit easier. Now remember what I said, this tool was originally designed to be used by two people. One person putting the twist into the fiber and the second person adding more fiber as the tool goes out. Now the nice thing with this one, as you can see, I'm using my thumb to stop it and I am only limited in the length of my single by the length of my arm. And so, as you can see, I am building onto the paddle like so. Um, the one, the spindle that I have by Allen Berry works the same way and I'm going to showcase that a little bit. I'm going to break this up because I do want to show what it's like to join fiber as well. So I'm going to take it off the paddle. Now that is the other downside to this particular type of tool is when you have to wind off, it is a little bit more of a challenge because this is a flat piece. But usually what I do is just wind off into a ball. So now with the one from Allen, I'm going to lock behind. One of the reasons why I really like this spindle is I like this cross because it gives me a sort of a guide for wrapping the fiber onto the paddle that seems to work pretty well as I come, I have to get started on here. Okay, as I come around, and I get this unique cross, which I have really enjoyed. Okay. I do this all the time. For some reason, I always end up getting it to work around the paddle, and I'm not quite sure why that happens. S support spinner problems. All right, so I'm spinning away. All right, here we go. All right, so getting a piece, once again, just like with any fibers, you want to make sure that you have an opening and that you get those fibers overlaid so that they join really well. Spinning away from me, always make sure that you go in the same direction. Do a quick check. I love, Ellen's spindle is so perfect for being able to spin consistently. I love it. So I have the drafting triangle. Spinning, I can stop it. And then doing a very quick wind on. So, oh, whoops, I did it. I went, 
I, I went towards me instead of away from me, so I broke it, no problem. I will just... And I do love the sound that these make as you are spinning with them. All right. So now that you have fiber spun and you can just keep building up and building up and building up like I have here. So you've got this, just this beautiful cop that just keeps building and building and building and building. When you take it off, there are a couple different ways to do it. You can Andean ply it off, and I've demonstrated how to do Andean plying on other videos. But what I wanted to show is, in the end, what the finished rope with Valet Black Nose looks like. And you can see how you have this wonderfully fluffy, and this is with the two different styles of spindles. So I've got one that I applied with the Mayan spinner from Allen and one that I applied from Muddy Duck. And so you can see. Now, a couple different things that I wanna talk ab about a little bit. I'm using a coarse fiber that has been processed rather coarsely, so it's, it's not going to be as smooth or as consistent. Can you spin a variety of fibers with this particular tool? Sure, you can. If you wanna try cotton, go for it. I, I think that would be a huge challenge, but I'm sure that you could probably find a way to get that twist into the cotton. This was primarily used for coarser fiber, such as plant fibers, um, agave, sagebrush, um, hemp, things like that. Things that you would traditionally make a rope from and then make a rope basket or rug or mat or something like that. That's not to say that this tool couldn't be used for finer spinning. However, I'm going to be really honest. I think there are better tools out there for finer spinning. That's not to say this isn't a fun tool to have in your collection, but it is a tool that is designed to simply put twist into a coarser bit of fiber. So once again, today's spotlight is a Mayan spindle, a whirly gig, or a twisting paddle, which I think that's gonna be the new thing that I call this. To me, a twisting paddle is the perfect name for this particular type of spinning tool, which was primarily used to put twist into fiber that would eventually become rope. So if you would like to see what I am going to do with this particular fiber that I've spun on here, please stay tuned. I am gonna start looking at different tools that can be used with hand spun fiber. Hopefully that you'll stay tuned for that. As always, if there are additional spinning tools that you would like to see, please drop that into the comments. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, happy spinning.